Hello and welcome to Ask Your Academic. Today's session will cover the MSc Brain Sciences and the MSc Psychological Science Conversion, as well as MSc Research Methods of Psychological Science. Um, we're joined by our programme leads and they're here to answer any questions that you have about the programmes that they teach on. Um, a number of questions have been submitted beforehand, so we'll do our best to get through all of those. If during the session you have any further questions, you can use the chat box um, and I'll keep an eye on that. Um, and you can also use that to say hello and let us know where you're watching from. If after the session you have any further questions, you can email the administration team for the programme and you'll find that website, it's that email address on the website of the programme page. Um, and that's near the top of the page in the blue box. We are recording today's session, uh, so that will be made available to you after today. So if you miss anything or you joined a bit later, um, you'll be able to catch up. So we only have a short session, so if it's all right with everybody, um, we'll just go round and uh, let everybody introduce themselves. And if you could give a bit of an overview on the programme you teach on, that would be amazing. Um, um, do you like to go first? I'm happy to. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maxine Swingler and I'm programme lead for the MSc in Psychological Science. So this is a conversion programme for people with a science background who wish to go on into psychology. Um, it's a one year programme and it's, it's accredited by the BPS. So that means the British Psychological Society credit the degree um, and it provides a pathway for anyone who wish, wishes to go on and do further postgraduate study um, in psychology, either as a practitioner or, or as PhD and so on. Um, I've got lots of information about the programme on our SWAYS, which I've uh, just updated. So I will share them in the chat. Um, and also happy to answer questions and talk to you today. Shall I go next? Yeah, yeah, please. Hi, folks. I'm Guillaume Mosley. I'm in charge of the MS in Bind Sciences, which is a programme where we um, accept as students with a variety of background, but mostly in psychology, neuroscience, and some biosciences. And the program is very much focused on neuroscience and cognitive brain imaging. Uh, so you'll get, compared to the other programs we offer, you'll get um, a much more um, biological angle, neuroscience um, type of things. Uh, but we do cover everything from molecular neuroscience to social psychology. It's quite a broad range of topics when it comes to particular projects you could do with us. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Phil McAleer. So I'm program lead of the research methods of psychological science MSc, which is kind of like um, for people that have generally done a psychology undergraduate um, and now want to take the, their studying further really is focused on research methods, hence um, the kind of the topics are covered in it. It's not hugely theoretical in terms of all the different kind of fields of psychology, but more about applying different methods within those fields. So we cover kind of brain imaging methods, neuroscience methods, meta science, statistical methods, um, data skills, and qualitative analysis, and a bunch of other kind of different type of methodological approaches particularly new ones thinking about if people are interested, things like virtual reality and social robotics are starting to bring in new methodology courses as well. Um, yeah, so I lead that program and I think I'll pass over to James to say hi, who is the deputy on that program as well. Yeah, normally I'll jump in for introduction, but I thought I'd let you go uh, first rather than introduce myself first. Yeah, hi everyone. My name's James Bartlett. So Phil's going to be having a little bit of time off in the upcoming year. So I'm stepping in as Depsy um, program lead for research methods of psychological science. Um, I, I run uh, one of the stats courses on uh, the research methods course and also work on a few um, courses within Maxine psychological science as well. So pretty much no matter what program you sign up for, you will see me somewhere, uh, apart from Guillaume's uh, nowhere near molecular biology. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Um, we always get asked about uh, the project element of the MSCs. Um, I don't know how similar they are across the different programmes, but could you tell us a wee bit more about um, so how students pick their topic? Do they pick it themselves or from a list? How are they assigned a supervisor? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't mind jumping in because I've got construction going outside my window, so it's quiet for three seconds. So I'll do it now. Um, on the MSC research methods or RMOPS, as we sort of love an abbreviation, what we do is we one of the requirements on the course is to have an aligned supervisor. So prior to actually getting the unconditional offer for the course, we'll um, get in touch with yourselves or you'll get in touch with us. And uh, we will then try to fit you up with a supervisor of a related topic. Um, so you're kind of coming onto the course knowing what your project will be from the get go. And then really from day one of the course, you can start to work on your project. Um, but the hand in of the dissertation isn't up until isn't till August of later of the next year. So plenty of time to work on it. And the proposal at the start doesn't have to be set in stone. It can be flexible. It's really just um, for you and the supervisor to really kind of have a starting point. So no one's coming onto the course without a clear expectation of what they're going to be working on. But that's the MSE ARM OPS and the others work slightly differently. I'm happy to, to go next. Um, so our program allocation, uh, project allocation works a wee bit differently in the science program. So students don't start a dissertation until the January. So for this cohort, January 2024, towards the end of semester one, so around about December time, we will um, get all our information from our project supervisors. So we have uh, staff from a wide range of research areas with a different expertise who provide us with some information on the types of projects they, they can supervise, um, previous projects, previous publications. We bring all that information together into one website. We share it with the students and then the students will organise a meeting with any supervisors that they're potentially interested in doing a project with, have a bit of a chat with them um, about potential ideas and projects. So, and then they go away and the system for requesting a supervisor will open on a certain date and close on a certain date. And during that time period, students can request, send a request to the supervisor. Um, and then by the end of that process, we would hope that everyone has got a supervisor and the, the supervisor responds. Of course, supervisors only have so many places. Some are more popular than others because of the types of topic they do. So what we also do is we ask students to provide some information on their project interests. So if it turns out they don't get their first choice or they can't find anyone that does that particular research topic, we can then look at our expertise for supervisors and then match them up with um, students that best fit. Um, and so all of that should be done by January. And after that, the students and the supervisors will work together on the project and the projects are due in August. Um, the other thing to say is we've got a lot of resources to support the dissertation project. We know it's the first dissertation in psychology. So in, in our programme, we provide a little bit more support than some of the other postgraduate programmes. Um, and we also have sort of milestones that we, we we aim towards for getting different parts of the project done. Right, and for Bind Sciences, the system is quite similar to what Maxine described, um, where we uh, you, you join the program without a supervisor, we will give you a list of projects which will be quite uh, varied in topics. Um, and we'll try to, based on students' preferences, we'll try to match uh, students to their uh, preferred uh, preferred projects. The, the one thing that's going to be different next year is that for the first time, um, students in brain sciences will be able to do a training in, um, a, a, get a personal license uh, for animal uh, handling. So you'd be able to do um, actually in vivo studies. So there'll be a potentially a few in vivo projects available. So you'd be able to do a project that involves um, directly dealing with, with, with animals because you'll get the training to, you'll have the option to get the license. So that opens a few more opportunities. But other, other than that, we have plenty of projects um, in, in, in brain imaging with, with humans um, and, and other types of things, including Meta science simulations type of things, the secondary data analysis and so on. So there's there's plenty available. Thank you. And Kim, I've got another question here, which I think you kind of covered there in that answer, but someone was asking, is it possible to do research in the field of chronobiology, circadian rhythm for MSC brain sciences? 
Yeah, so it depends it depends on the year because uh, we we have uh, we have slightly different pools of supervisors each year. So depending on people's expertise, we might be able to offer a project in uh, uh, in that field. Uh, but I can't I cannot make any promises because it depends on who is available. So we can have these discussions at the start of the year. Um, but another way to look at projects is also to think of the type of skills you want to acquire. So it's not necessarily just the topic. Uh, maybe you want to learn how to handle FMI data or certain types of behavioral measurements. Uh, and that could be your priority as well. Uh, so we, we can have those discussions uh, at the start of the year. Thank you. And, and then so a few people were asking about optional courses. So when in the set of semesters, do you choose them? Do you choose them at the very start or do you choose them as you go throughout for all programmes, sorry? Oh, I'm going to jump in there just to get the ball rolling. Um, on the, again, on the, the MSE ARM OPS programme, the majority of the options are in the second semester and what we have is um, what are called core modules, really in the semester one, which are the ones you have to take as part of some of the requirements of the MSC. There are some optionals, options in the first semester, but the majority of them are in the second semester. And really, you can choose to do whichever options you prefer from the get-go. Basically, when you register on the program, you then choose all your optional modules. There is a time to drop them, to change your mind. So usually within the first three weeks of the semester, semester one and semester two, if you think module isn't really for you, you can drop it and take another one of the optional modules instead. So it's allowed to kind of like dip your toe in, see what you think and work from there as well. But yeah, really from kind of September, when you register, you can choose your optional modules at that point and then kind of see how things pan out as you go through. Uh, okay, so for psychological science, uh, the conversion program, very similar to RMPS. And as Phil said, that you have a range of options to choose when you enroll. And for our program, uh, you have three 10 credit options that you can choose um, on top of all of your core courses. So you have uh, 90 credits of core courses and that what that means is these are courses you have to do in order to meet the BPS accreditation requirements. So things like research methods, cognitive, social psychology, but that leaves you with 30 credits to choose what you wish. And we have two streams um, in the psychological science programme. So you could go for um, the clinical stream and your optional courses um, and choose from a range of courses that touch on that area of psychology. So, for example, autism, a biological basis of psychological disorders, um, also health neuroscience. And we've got counselling um, as a new course coming in this year. Um, or you could choose the cognitive neuroscience pathway, which um, has a range of courses like neuropsychological deficit, decision neuroscience, brain mapping, um, and you can follow that. And what that means is if you choose three courses within those specialised streams, you will be doing a dissertation with a supervisor who has expertise in that area. Um, so you will also get that in your transcript, you know, that you've got the specialisation of clinical or cognitive neuroscience. What I would say, though, is, and I always say this to my students, is to choose the courses that interest you the most. We have got quite a wide range of options. And if you have a look at the, the sway for the programme information, it will detail what's on offer this year. Um, and you can have a look. Uh, we've also got a reading list, um, as, and I'll send, I'll put those on the, the chat as well to give you an idea of what's involved in some of those option courses. Um, but just to choose the ones that you're interested in. We usually have about 50% who do specialised stream and about 50% who do the general stream, who choose three courses from any area and do a, a psychology dissertation. Thank you, thank you. Hmm. Oh, you're on mute. All right, yeah. Uh, so what, what, what was the question that about the... Uh, about when students choose the optional courses? Yeah, so the uh, so brain sciences, the, the options are in semester two and the, you choose at the start of January. There's a, there's a, there's a presentation with uh, all the options. We'll discuss the options at the very start of the program, but you don't, you don't make a final decision until January. So there's plenty of time to make up your mind. And we, we're changing a bit the structure next year, which give, will give uh, more flexibility. But like, for instance, this year, everybody 
um, uh, all the all the options were uh, were available. So whatever people um, decided to go for, they had a they had a, a spot in, in their favorite courses. Perfect, thank you. Um, our QA is getting quite busy, um, and thanks very much for answering those questions. If it's all right with you, I'm going to ask if you, I'll ask the question, and then if you can let us know the answer, just so when the recording goes out, it's actually recorded um, that people can watch again. So there was one about um, for yourself, Phil and James, uh, as I need to find a potential supervisor, I would like to know if there's a limit to the number of graduate students a professor can take. I'm a little late in preparing my research project and I'm worried that there are no uh, places available for my uh, favourite professors. Uh, I'm happy to that. Yeah, so as with all the courses and in any uni, there really is kind of a, a limit on how many people, how many supervisors, how many students supervisors can supervise or what people can talk about. Um, so and what supervisors work on different courses. Uh, and it's the same on MSc RMOPS. And what will happen when you receive your conditional offer is the, the, the team will ask you to contact James and myself. And from that point, we will then start working with you to look at our available supervisors on our MSc and then see which one comes closest to matching your interests as best we can. There's always a bit of give and take, a bit of flexibility. But yeah, um, I wouldn't worry too much about kind of uh, getting a, a, a full on project set in stone, it's really good to have an idea, but um, again, some flexibility is really required within that most of the time anyway. So we will be in contact, but what I would say to everyone right now who's thinking about it is just go through the application process and you'll get to the conditional offer stage. And at that point, we'll start to work with you to find out an appropriate supervisor for you. Thank you. And then there was a question about uh, how you'll be uh, assessed the program it was specifically for i think brain sciences um game yeah so the uh, so most of the course most of the assessment is coursework so it's things you do uh it's 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 group work things you do at home uh we have we have only one exam uh that's part of the uh uh, fundamentals of neuroscience in semester one there's just to check basic knowledge um and other than that, it's it's coursework. So you've got plenty of time. The deadline is set at the start of the course, and then you can organize your time any way you want to meet the, the final deadline. Thank you. Um, and Maxine, is that the same for psychological science conversion? <clears throat> um, so in psychological science, we have a mix of exams and coursework. Uh, so it is a little bit different from the, the other two programmes in that respect. Um, a, it's around about 50-50 at the minute. So for the research methods courses, um, which in total are 40 credits of the overall 180 credits of the programme, it's all coursework. Um, we, we have small formative assessment, not formative, um, small assessment on data skills um, sort of earlier on in the semester. Um, which aren't worth a huge amount and just to help students can get their confidence in data analysis and data skills. And then at the end of each semester, we have a larger piece, uh, a report, a research report um, that, that constitutes 50% of that overall course grade. Um, for some of the optional courses and core courses, we use coursework, but we have quite a wide variety of things like um, portfolios, um, discussions, debates, um, as well as more traditional sort of essays. Um, and then in December and April and May, we have um, exams. At the moment, these are open book 24 hour online exams. Um, and those are done within the exam diet over a period of two to three weeks. Um, and of course, there's also a reset period as well in August. Um, so as I say, there's quite a wide variety. I've put the link tree in there for the psych science and if you have a look at the welcome to the program, frequently asked questions and the program handbook for this year, it will give you a bit of an idea of, of how all the courses and the assessments work. Obviously, things can change from year to year, but it will give you an idea. Phil, James, is there anything you want to add in for research methods? 
Um, I actually, in research methods, so RMOPS, we, it is 100% coursework. There is no exams. Everything is done as continual assignment on all the different modules. We removed exams the uh, last couple of years um, just to work with coursework. And I think students have found that better. Um, so yeah, it's fully 100% coursework on that programme. Thank you. Um, and then there was a question. It was uh, for brain sciences, but I think it will apply to all of you. Um, just how often are students on campus? So what's that teaching time like in class versus what are they expected to do out with? Well, you'll find yourself on campus uh, most days, but it, it will depend on the weeks. Um, but there's, uh, so there's formal classes and it'll be several, so it'll be several days a week for that. But then there's uh, plenty of group work. Um, and um, I would encourage people to come to campus as much as they can to hang out with uh, people in the class. And uh, it's a great campus, um, plenty of resources. And there's plenty going on too, like uh, seminars, journal clubs, and so on. So it's, uh, I think, you know, I think if you're, if you're curious and engaged in the program, you'll find yourself on campus uh, most days, really. Yeah, I was just going to read, I was, I was going to say, Guillaume, um, the kind of how much contact time you actually have in any given week varies on kind of what options you take and when you take your options. Um, you usually on normal PSs about there's probably classes at least two or three, three, two or three days a week, if not more in semester one. But yeah, there is at Glasgow, we have tons of seminars and workshops and journal clubs going on all the time. Um, and there are some excellent cafes on campus as well, one of which I've just been to, which has wonderful cakes. Um, so there's always a reason to be on campus as well. And it does kind of help just kind of have that support from the rest of your group as well, if, the more you're here. Uh, yeah, happy to answer this for uh, the conversion programme. So um, generally there's a lecture on most days during teaching time. Um, and you can find out what the session dates and the teaching semesters are on the welcome to the programme information. There's a link to that. Um, you could also have a look at, there's a timetable on the current uh, programme handbook. And um, it kind of gives you an idea of when times are, when teaching times are. Bear in mind, we not only have the lectures though, we also have a once a week research methods lab. So that's in a smaller group where you'll be working in groups of around five or six with a, a tutor. Um, on your project work um, throughout the, the programme. So we would really encourage people to come in as much as possible. Um, as uh, Guillaume and Phil had said, there's lots of other opportunities. There's staff office hours that you can go and talk to them about their course, ask questions. There are seminars going on and there's social events going on, either that we've organised or maybe Psychology Society have organised. So there's lots of opportunities to really engage and meet and network with people um, throughout the, the programme. Thank you. And then uh, Phil and James, there was a question there about your time skills for getting back to students uh, on their sort of quick survey about their project. What are your sort of time skills that you're working to? I was going to say James is doing it now. Uh, <laughs> but no, yes. So uh, it's just kind of heavy marking season right now for us. Um, but over the next couple of weeks, we plan to get back to everyone that has filled in the survey. So we will be in touch in the next couple of weeks for sure. Thank you. Um, then we have another question. I've received offers for both brain sciences and research methods, both of which I really like. If I choose one, can I sort of take classes from the other as well? Uh, so, I mean, um, I'm happy for Guillaume to jump in as well on this. I was just going to say that actually a lot of the modules do overlap. Um, so depending which modules you take, et cetera, et cetera, there are some that are unique to the different programs, particularly the more neuroscience ones would fall into brain science. Um, we do have students every year who do want to take on other modules. The university does have a limit, which you can take. Um, but often what tends to happen is if you are really interested, and you can find the time within your schedule, we can make some of the materials open to you and you can go out and sort of do it self-directed. But generally we find people come in with this idea of doing a whole bunch of other modules and time 
gets on them and they really should focus on the actual coursework they have to do. And it is better in the long run to spend that spare time on your project and think about how you can maximize the project that comes out of the dissertation thinking forward towards PhD and future other work, basically. That's what I would say. Thank you. And then we've got a question there, um, Maxine, for yourself, um, it's saying that there, are there any specific topics or books that we should look at before starting the programme, or is it just a case of re um, referring to the reading list that's on the SWE? So, yes, there is. Um, if you go onto that link tree, um, and I'll just also put it in the, the chat for the, the summer reading list, there's nothing that's actually required of you in terms of reading, but given that we've had a request previously from applicants to have, have a bit of a preparatory reading because it's a new subject that they're entering into, we've compiled a pre-arrival reading list. Um, and all of these resources we make sure are usually openly accessible. So you don't need to buy a book or get access to a book in the library to have a, have a look at these. Um, we've got one that's sort of an overview of psychology, and then we've got some more that cover some areas in the core courses and just give you an idea um, about psychology. We're actually currently updating it for the course options. So um, do keep an eye on it. Then there'll be a few more things appearing for different new courses, but it's certainly worth um, having a look at that and looking at some of those open access textbooks because quite a lot of the courses are using them anyway, as well as the ones that are provided in the library. Thank you. And then I'll open that up to, your, um, to the other programmes. Is there any uh, reading that students can do before or any preparations they can make before they join the course? The one thing I was actually just going to put in the, the main channel, um, if, if possible, or maybe we, can, you know, maybe we can get it shared after, is the, the data skills books that we use and we have written within our school. Um, all our programmes teach data skills through a software called R in our studio. And for a lot of students, this is a new software. Um, so each one of the kind of the programs has a book that is assigned to their data skills course. Um, and I think if students wanted to, one thing to get ahead would be kind of to look at this book specific for that course of the course they're going to do. But you also have access to all of our kind of other teaching on that sort of data skills aspect. So like um, our undergraduate books for level one, level two, level three as well, if you've never used it and you want to kind of start afresh and go from there. So I think for me, one thing I would say, probably starting is on the data skills and just kind of getting used to it would be a good place to think about. Yeah, I just dropped the link in the uh, in the general chat. Thank you. And um, Guillaume, any sort of preparations that students can make for brain sciences? Same, same recommendation as Phil, uh, check out the because in brain sciences, people have very different backgrounds. So check out the courses, especially in semester one, check the reading lists, and you'll see that they, they organized in uh, different sections from um, core, core uh, reading that you could focus on immediately to more advanced material, depending on your background. And if you're new to programming or R programming more specifically, go and check out the site teach our um, github to to get started because that's one thing a lot of students might struggle with and i can guarantee it will give you a lot of practical skills not only during the year and for your project but afterwards every year i see uh, graduates who get jobs in in data science um, get a phd position get um, um, even even jobs in in uh, government or with NGOs because of their uh, programming skills on top of on top of the other things, but it, it will make a big difference in your CV. Thank you. Um, I'm just checking the time there. It's half eleven. Have we got time just to squeeze in uh, one last question there that came through about uh, class sizes? Is that all right? Yeah. And um, so somebody was asking, so what? What size the classes generally tend to be, Phil? In go first. Put me on the spot, Naomi. Uh, yeah, on RMOPS, it again varies on module to module. It can swing from about five on some of the wouldn't say not as popular uh, kind of niche method modules, maybe so about five to ten up into about maybe fifty or sixty in things like the core modules which we align with brain science on like stats, yeah, not stats, sorry, data skills, 
normally has about 50 students on it, but that's more taught lab based than kind of straight up lecture. Um, a lot of the things we use are kind of small group tutorials and small group discussions. So for RMOPS, it will vary from about five, probably average about 15 to 20, and normally max out about 50, depending on what module we're talking about. Okay. And, and just because um, Phil mentioned uh, your class there, uh, Guillaume, what about your classes? What size do they tend to be? Uh, they, they'll, be they'll be quite similar. They, they'll range from, uh, well, depending on the options, then in semester two, I, th I think they'll range from 30 to 50. Uh, okay, so the cohort for MSc Psychological Science tends to be about between about 60 and 70 students. Um, for some classes, they will join, and in terms of the lectures, they'll join up with um, a conversion program that's offered by the School of Education, MSc Psychological Studies. And in that case, the, the actual class size is about 200. Um, so that's the case for the research methods program uh, course and also uh, social psychology um, and, and some of the others. With the options courses, you'll find those are smaller classes because it's only certain people that have taken that um, in the course. Uh, to support the research methods, we have, as I say, this smaller group teaching um, of around 30 students in a class with a tutor each week so that you get more contact with the, the tutor on that basis. Thank you. Well, I think most of our questions have all now been answered. So thanks very much for um, keeping an eye on that chat as well, because I could not have answered any of those. <laughs> um, so thanks very much, everybody, for your time. Um, and thanks very much for submitting your questions. Hopefully you've all found that useful and your questions have been answered. If not, um, as I said, the administration uh, email address is on all the web pages on our website for the different programmes. So. If there's anything that you've not had a chance to ask, please drop an email um, and someone will get back to you. Um, we have recorded this session, so that will be issued probably later this week um, for you to re-watch and um, sort of catch up on anything that you might have missed, because there was a lot of information shared there. Um, so thanks very much to our panel for taking time out of your day, and thanks very much everybody for joining us. I uh, hope you found that interesting, and hopefully we'll see you all in September. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>